Good morning. I'm Pastor Schmidt, retired chaplain for uh, this area, Siouxland. And uh, Pastor Awe is in uh, Poland right now, finishing up a mission trip there. Uh, while he was gone on Friday night, his father, Pastor uh, Arnold Awe, uh, was called home to heaven. And uh, they're wake, uh, waiting to make arrangements until Pastor Awe is back. Now, Pastor Awe and his wife, uh, Arnold Awe, and his wife are members at Faith Lutheran Church. And I assume that the funeral will be at Faith Lutheran Church. Pastor Ralph Shorey is the pastor there and also our circuit visitor uh, for all the Sioux City churches. Uh, so um, we, we'll have a special prayer for uh, the Awe family and uh, please uh, remember them in your personal prayers and uh, anything that you can do to, to help uh, Susie and the family and Pastor Awe. Uh, he is to be back Wednesday or uh, Monday evening and uh, so I think he'll be in the office or taking care of arrangements uh, starting Tuesday or, or whatever. So uh, then also uh, you might have heard that the former DCE here, Scotty Hansen, uh, passed away. And he passed away on July 19th. His funeral is this afternoon at 4 o'clock at Lincoln, Nebraska at Christ Lutheran Church. 4 p.m. today for Scotty Hansen. And so we include his um, wife and uh, uh, son, I believe. It's a son he has yeah. in, in our prayers. And uh, so uh, our heart goes out to them. Just as Jesus' heart uh, went out to the widow uh, at Nan. Uh, and uh, it said uh, he had compassion upon her. In some translations, says his heart went out to her. And uh, certainly our church is a, a compassionate church, as Jesus, our good shepherd, is compassionate to those who are hurting. Uh, our message today is based on the gospel reading for today, and uh, we pray that God will Open your hearts to the message today to bring you comfort and strength and peace and joy. In the name of Jesus, amen. Pastor, yes. I just want to add something. I changed the numbers up there, and apparently I made a mistake because no, they gave me eight of them. Oh, that's right. She had the wrong ones in the book. Oh, wrong ones. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to announce those right now. Okay. okay. So the first uh, hymn. Uh, that we will sing in a moment is 475, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. The second one is 809, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And the uh, closing hymn is in the other songbook, number 198, and that's Sweet Hour of Prayer. Isn't it 198? That's what you have, yeah. Sweet Hour of Prayer. So. Uh, that number I will announce. It's 198, not 97. Okay? So the, the name, the, the numbers that the secretary had that she gave me were wrong. Okay? So, okay. So 475 is correct. So let us begin with that first hymn. <clears throat> Oh, 
Let us arise and join in the Divine Service Setting 1, page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of our Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Give us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The intro for today is taken from the 145th Psalm where we read on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate I will extol you my God and King and bless your name forever and ever every day I will bless you and praise you every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, mighty God and Father, we worship him, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Jesus. 
Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Savior, the protector of all who trust in you, strengthen our faith and give us courage to believe that in your love you will rescue us from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from the Old Testament book of Genesis, the ninth chapter, the promise of the rainbow. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, it is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading continues the series of eight lessons on the book or letter of Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Alleluia. Hallelujah, Lord, to hope shall we go. You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue with the second hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, number 809.
Grace and mercy and peace be with you all from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land, and he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. Who does not have some pain in their life? They were making headway painfully. That same word is used when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And when he is sweating like drops of blood with the agony of the, the mental pain and turmoil as Jesus takes all of our sins upon himself, all of our guilt, all of our shame, and yes, the wrath of God for our sins, our punishment. Painfully is used in the Garden of Gethsemane and here with the disciples. It is such a searing, painful turn. Did Jesus leave them there in the lurch when he saw what was going on? Or did he come to them? Our text shows that he came to them. He came to them. And as they became frightened, thinking it was a ghost, immediately he said to them, Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Take heart is translated sometimes as be of good courage. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't think that God doesn't care. Don't think that you are alone. It is I. And literally, it is that expression, it is the I am. The I am the good shepherd. How God described himself to Moses at the burning bush when he asked, what's your name? And he says, I am who I am. And we translate that Yahweh. The I am, the very source of our existence who created us out of nothing. I don't know of any language that doesn't have the verb to be, in which we get is, are, and so forth. It's kind of the root of our language. And God is saying, I'm the root of your very existence. I created you and I will sustain you. And then Jesus expands on that and says, I am the bread of life. I am your nourishment, your source of food to exist. I am the resurrection and the life. I'm the source of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, through Jesus. 
And he comes now to these disciples who are scared stiff, thinking there's a ghost coming towards them. And immediately he brings encouragement to them. We think about that, what he says, and do not be afraid. Many fears in this world. We fear about our economy, we fear about our nation, we fear about our family, our job. We fear what's happening to morals. We fear what the future holds. We fear illnesses. And Jesus comes to us in our need. He comes to us as he came to these disciples in their pain. He comes to people who don't know where their next meal is coming. And he comes to people who, like the people in the previous gospel reading for last week, were fed so abundantly in the feeding of the 5,000 that they had leftovers after everyone ate as much as they wanted. Have you ever been to a buffet? where you ate all you could? A fish fry on Friday or all the chicken you can eat, roasted or fried or however, till you started to feel sick because you ate so much. But what a bargain it was. And here they had had all so that Everyone was satisfied and they still collected leftovers. Twelve baskets full of leftovers. And then immediately Jesus sends them out. He sends the disciples in the boat to go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida. And then he dismissed the crowd. And you know, that word for crowd is, is kind of unique. We were art out in the entryway there. We were talking about vegetables, about tomatoes, about all the produce. And yesterday at a birthday party in Omaha, we were talking about cucumbers and zucchini and, and tomatoes and peppers and all those different things that God has given us. The abundance. As the, the intro at Psalm 4 today says, they shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness. And then it goes on, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The abundance of what God gives. But now, looking into that word crowd, it's interesting. That word for crowd isn't a people word. It's an agricultural word. It actually refers to a field and the rows of crops. That's what it actually means. So when Jesus fed the 5,000 just before this miracle of walking on water on the Sea of Galilee, he was talking about people as part of the harvest. And they set him up in hundreds and fifties, not military style, but in the idea that this is God's field, this is his crop. 
And that's how that fits in then later on at the end of our scripture, our gospel reading for today, notice that these people who brought the sick to him, where did they go? They went to the farmer's market. Not to put tomatoes and cucumbers and all the produce there, but souls people who were ill, people who were hurting, that they might be touched by Jesus. Souls for whom Jesus would die on the cross. And so from the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 and the references to the crop and the harvest to hear at the marketplace and the farmer's market. We learn that God's viewpoint is that each soul is part of that harvest that he wants to bring into his fold. But there's some who will reject, some who will not believe and trust in him. And that happened in the parallel in John chapter 6, after the feeding of the 5,000. It said some departed, some did not believe, some doubted, but others did believe. And yet, even the disciples had their problems. Jesus had got in the boat with them, and then what happened? It said they were utterly astounded after the wind ceased, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. They didn't comprehend. They didn't understand what Jesus came here to do, to save souls, to die for us in our place, to bring us forgiveness and eternal life. I was reading a devotion by Martin Luther Wednesday or Thursday of this week, and he said something about this this lack of understanding that some people have. And he says, it's like, well, I'll just use, not what he would use, but uh, if you've had root beer in the, or root beer, as I used to say when I grew up in Indiana, uh, you know that whether it's the diet or the regular, it gets so foamy, you know, you have to wait a little bit at those things at Culver's or wherever before you can get the regular li liquid. And what happened here? The disciples and some of the crowd, they looked at, at Jesus as just a miracle worker and not as the Savior. And Martin Luther says, they looked at the froth the foam instead of at the substance. Why he came. The miracles show that he is the son of God, that he has all power, that he created all things. But the substance is that he came because he loved you. That's what our epistle lesson says. In Paul's prayer, it says that we might know the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ. My mom, I've told you before, is in dementia care eight years now at one of our nursing homes. And there's a, a fine Christian woman who's a CNA there. 
And last month, she said to me, I've been singing Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, to, to your mom. Now, my mom doesn't really say much at all. She's past the point of some of it's gobbledygook. It's, it's not really intelligible words. But she said, go ahead. Sing Jesus Loves Me to your mom. And we got to the point where we sang, I am weak. And then my mom said, and he is strong. And he is strong. Jesus shows his power here. Coupled with his mercy and compassion for each of you, he has the power to make those winds cease. Here he didn't even use a word like he did in the, the other uh, uh, story and miracle when he said, be still earlier in the Gospel of Mark. But when he got in the boat, the winds ceased. That peace of sins forgiven is the calm, the peace that the disciples needed, that you need, that I need, that everyone needs. Martin Luther, in another devotion, he talked about the water that is applied in baptism. And he said, you know, it looks like clear water, but it really isn't. You are washed in the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. That's how your sins are forgiven. And one day you'll join in that chorus in heaven, singing that praise, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and honor and glory and wisdom and strength. In baptism, Jesus made a covenant with you, not the rainbow covenant, but he said, I am your Savior. I love you. I forgive you. I took your place on the cross for your sins. I died for you. I rose for you. And I live for you. That's our Savior, Jesus Christ. In holy baptism, he gives you all those spiritual blessings. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Let us arise and join in the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray.
We pray, O Lord, for the whole family of God in Christ Jesus, that all his baptized children be strengthened with power through his spirit in their inner being, that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, and that we may be rooted and grounded in his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all who serve in the office of holy ministry, for the president of our synod, the president of our district, our circuit visitor, and for our own pastor. We pray for all teachers and church workers that in the midst of turbulent times, the presence and words of Christ would fill their hearts with courage and drive away all fear and that they would be filled with the conviction that God is able to do abundantly more than all we could ever ask or think. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray, O Lord, for an increase in full-time church workers, for the spread of the gospel, that many may come to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, and so be filled with all the fullness of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the leaders of our nation and all public servants and all in the armed forces, that they may be given grace to fulfill their varied callings with honor, courage, wisdom, and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all in need, the sick, the sorrowing, the lonely, the injured, and the dying. We pray for Keith Safer, Tom Grau, Diane Guthridge, Preston Thielman, Kim Daum, Ann Ortman, Tanner Haberman, Kim Fales, Matt Legrand, Josh Legrand, Rich Stevens, Mary Bose, Susan Utek, Sarah Hansen, Beth Donna Singleton, Kathy Mast, Pastor Jeff Walsh, Howie Holden Reed, Kimberly Christensen Bolke, Philip Foster, Lee Umlin, Justin Miller, Charles Kneck, Mark Wirth, Kinley Albrecht, Roxanne Daum, Dennis Fisher, Karen Nissen, Jessica Jorgensen, and babies, Lyle Todd, Shirley Haar, Lori Bach, Bob Dormeyer, Rick Zimmerman, Mark Conlon, Diane Hawk, Bill Miller, Dr. Michael Hatton, Phyllis Todd, Shelley Tuttle, Bill Miller, Paisley Jorgensen, Diane Barge, that Christ would ever be with their health in sickness, their peace in turmoil, their joy in sorrow, and their life in death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Gracious Lord, defend your church, especially Emmanuel Lutheran Wakefield, Nebraska, Grace Lutheran, Breckenridge, Minnesota, Trinity Lutheran, Brewster, Minnesota, Triune God Lutheran, Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, the LCMS District, Iowa East, and Marion, Iowa, Concordia University, Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor, Michigan, um, the Assembly of God Church, South Sioux City, Nebraska. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who draw close to you, Lord, that they may be filled with your goodness and mercy, your strength, your peace, your love. And we also pray today, especially for comfort for the family of Pastor Arnold, all who you took home to be with you forever in heaven. Lord Jesus Christ, great shepherd of your flock, it has pleased you to call a fellow pastor, uh, Arnold Awe, a pastor to your people in your, into your glorious presence. We thank and praise you for all the blessings and mercy you bestowed on your departed servant, especially for the years you permitted him to be your under-shepherd. We praise you for having kept him faithful in the face of trials and difficulties and recent illness, for having given success to your word which he proclaimed, for having built your temple in the hearts of many through his ministry, and for having given him a blessed death and reception into the kingdom of your glory in heaven. 
comfort all who mourn, including his uh, son, Pastor Michael Awe, and Susie, and all the family, and his wife, Belle, and help them to find comfort in your precious promises of your word. Because I live, you shall live also. As we await our joyful reunion in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, also be with the family of Scotty Hansen, and we pray for their comfort through Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, who has won victory over sin, death, and the power of Satan, and brought us into his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now receive our offerings. We join in the prayer our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 We close with hymn number 198 in the other songbook, the Red Book.
Oh, there, Joyce is doing it. Okay. Thank you, Joyce. I didn't know who was making the announcement, so. <laughs> Clara, thank you for playing today. Appreciate that. Uh, I will have Bible class today, and uh, uh, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity when you have the fairs and so forth to witness to your faith in Christ and to uh, also share the witness of this congregation to the uh, community of South Sioux City. So I uh, pray that everything goes well uh, for the fair coming up. Uh, any other announcements? Okay, thanks, Joyce. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, God's blessings to you. What? Yes, Ed. I know Pastor Witty, I have coffee with him at least once or twice a month, and uh, he's really looking forward to serving you here and uh, the community, and uh, uh, he's a fine pastor and, and uh, working with Pastor Aw here uh, and your people and the mission committee and uh, all involved elders, whatever. Um, anyway, he's looking forward to this, and so... Uh, um, glad that the Lord found a spot for him here. So, yeah. God's blessings to you. <laughs>